Hey students, hey, let me make a different video solution, one here involving the uh, lab. Uh, the uh, couple questions here, and of course this Kirchhoff one, you're supposed to, you're supposed to solve this. So uh, it does involve quite a bit of math. Let me get my calculator here uh, ready, and maybe I will put here lab, and I believe this was lab number six. Uh, and for that matter, it's actually step number six also. Uh, but uh, as this um, lab, the Kirchhoff Law, it's the second half of this uh, lab, and it's steps five, six, and seven. But it's this one here. It says set up the circuit, okay, and then calculate the currents in each of these. So let me say this top branch is current number one, and of course it would arc around, so this would still be current number one. Uh, then it would hit this node and split. I'll call this the, the middle branch, and number two. And then the rest of it, whatever that is, would go around the bottom branch, call it current number three. And, of course, current number three would arc around, and that would have to be the same current number three. And then they would recombine here at this node. And because of conservation of charge, this would say that... The current coming into this node, one, has to equal what's leaving, two or three. Or this node coming together, which is two and three, have to equal uh, one, which would be coming out of that node. So we don't want to do both nodes. We only want to do one node. And so let me call this equation number one. And then equations number two and number three, because we'll need three equations, because we've got three unknowns. The three unknowns are the three individual currents. Uh, maybe I'll just do this loop here. So I'll do six volts and then minus 105 I1. Let me pause right there and say you should use not the 105, but the value that was recorded back in step one. And I forget what that is right now, but back in step one, we our 105 was kind of close to 105, but wasn't exactly 105. Uh, and then likewise here, well, we'd be going with the current, so it's 205, and let me just say again, it's not exactly 205, so use the appropriate number when you actually solve it, so this will just kind of help you get ready to solve it. But that'll be current number two. Then we go from the big bar to the little bar, so that's minus 1.5, and again, let me point out, that when we measured this, it was it was something more than 1.5. Again, I forget what it is. It's probably close to 1.6. Usually these are like 1.58, 1.59, 1.60. Um, anyways, and then I get back where I started. So that would complete the loop. And I guess I would call that equation number two. All right, and then maybe I'll do the bottom loop here. So starting here, going across the battery, it's plus 1.5 because now I'm going from little bar to big bar. Uh, then I'm going against the current, so it's plus 205. And again, I2 is there. And again, notice the plus because I'm going against the current. Also, let me say, don't use the 205. Use the value that, that we measured in step one. Uh, then walking through or hiking around this loop, I'd go down or with the current. So it would be a minus. And this would be 750. And this would be I3. And I would end up back where I started, which is then equation number three. So these are our three equations, three unknowns, and we've now got a lot of algebra in order to solve that. Maybe I'll start by eliminating I1. And so I'll take equation one and put it right here in equation two and three if it's needed, but three does not have an I1 in there. So I'll just leave number uh, equation three untouched and basically combine one and two. So, uh, starting with the combining of the 6 and the negative 1.5, I would go 4.5. Okay, so then I would go minus 105 times current number 1, and current number 1 is current 2 plus current 3. And then minus 205 current number 2... And then I do, I've already taken care of the 1.5 there, and then that equals zero. And then maybe simplifying this a little bit, because when you do a distributive property, this becomes a 105 number two, and then of course also a 
105 number three. And I'll just write that one down right here. But the 102, I'm sorry, the, the 105, which has current number two, could actually combine with this one. And so the 100 and the 200 make 300, and the two fives make 10. And so I would call this the combination, and I'll call it one comma two. So that's the combination of number one and number two. And so, like I said, it should only have currents two and three in it because we substituted in for number one. And we didn't actually have to substitute anything in to reduce the equation number three down to a one and two because it never had a number one. But if it did, we would substitute it in. But in either case, then, let me now think of it as this equation, which is the combination of one and two, and this equation, equation number three, as now two equations and two unknowns. And so that's how we do our algebra with a system of equations. We combine two equations together to get rid of an unknown. So in this case, I'm going to put one into two and one into three if needed. But like I said, it's not needed. And so now we are eliminating I1 from any of our equations and we're down to just two equations. So this equation and the one we didn't have to touch. All right, so then the next step is to play the same game over and over again. And so no matter how many unknowns, you keep playing this game and keep getting uh, less and less unknowns. Okay, so why don't I just solve this for I3? All right, doesn't really matter which one, but I kind of see i3 kind of by itself, just because that's the way I wrote it. So I'll kind of move the i3 over. Uh, then I'll divide everything by 105. And so we get now i3. Okay. And maybe to simplify this a little bit, I will go 4.5 divided by 105. So this is 0 0.0429 minus, and so this would be 310 divided by 105 equals 2.952 I2. Okay. So that's what I3 is equal to when we rearrange this combination equation. Which again, now we can go through that step. We solve this for I3 and we substitute it into the other equation. And the combination of those two equations, this one, which is already a combination of two, but this one shoved into that one is gonna give me only I2s. And I'll be down to one equation and one unknown and I can solve it. So let me rewrite equation number three. So it's 1.5 plus 205 I2 minus 750 times I3. And that was the whole point of solving this for I3. So 0.0. 429 minus 2952 I2. And so that's substituting in I3 and then equal to zero. Nice. All right, so now maybe I'll do a little distribution here. Let me take this 750 and multiply it by this number up here. And so doing the distributive property, this would become a 32.143. And then also doing the distributive property here, this would be the 750 times this number, the two nine five so i'll just copy it and put it down and that becomes and i should point out the two positive or two negatives now become a positive this becomes 2214 i'll just call it 0.29 and this would be i 
2 equals 0. Uh, now, hopefully we can kind of see here that these two would add together. And so I'll take my 2,214 and add to it the 205. And it looks like that's a 2,419.29. And for that matter, I can combine these two together and move it to the other side. In fact, maybe mentally I'll just move them to the other side first. So I'll give that a positive when I move it to the other side. And then move that one with a minus. And then this is equal to a 30.643. And then finally, I can get I2 by taking that 30 and dividing it by this number up here, the, oops, too far, the 2,419, hit enter. And so current number two comes out to be just a hair under 13 milliamps. And so 12.7 milliamps. And so there's the math and that should match our measured value, something close. Uh, maybe a little bit off because again, I use the numbers just in the diagram, not the real numbers that you should be using, okay? Now, using that information, we can take I2 and put it back into any of these previous equations, and probably this one is the best, to figure out how much current is in number three. So 0 0.0429 minus 2.952 times this current, and I'll just go last answer and hit enter. And it looks like we are about five and a half milliamps. There we go. And then to finish this problem and do current number one, now again, we can put that back into any of the equations. Uh, now I guess these two don't have an I1 in there, so that won't be useful. But uh, back here, we could put it into either equation one or equation two. They each have an I1 in there, and this one seems to be the easiest. It just says add two and three together to get number one. All right, so I'll just add those together. So I'll take my last answer and also add it to this 12.7 milliamps, and it looks like I'm at 18.2 milliamps. All right. There's the algebra. Three equations, three unknowns. Hopefully that helps. All right. Take care.